What comes to mind when you hear the words makeup, foundation, beauty salon or lace underwear? If your answer was in any way gender specific, then this video is for you. Recent evidence shows gender stereotypes need to be put to rest. In Japan, one in five men aged 15 to 60, wear makeup. 8.5% go for regular beauty treatments, and, lace boxer shorts have been selling like hotcakes. Why you might think? Let's see. Getting straight to the point, as you might have predicted, such trends are most likely, influenced by the spread of social networking. When it comes to men's makeup, looking at Japanese history, aristocratic men wore makeup all the way up to the beginning of the 20th century. And in the 17th and 18th centuries, it became fashionable for town people, to have their eyebrows, trimmed. However, after Japan was forced to open up to the world, the government enforced definitions of masculinity and femininity, as part of a wider definition of national duty. As a result, the idea that men shouldn't make up became the accepted view. After the war, under the influence of US and other Western cultures, some artists and musicians began to wear makeup. Then, in the 1980s, cosmetics companies began marketing men's foundation and eyebrow pens. Unfortunately, it didn't go well. Those who thought men shouldn't wear makeup paid no attention. And fashionable people didn't like the stereotypical image of men with dark skin and crisp eyebrows, promoted by these cosmetics companies. Then, in the 1990s, a number of male athletes began dyeing their hair, getting piercings and tattoos. This high-profile shift in macho male behavior, began to shift general perceptions. However, there is no doubt that the spread of social networking triggered the current boom in male makeup. With the development of photo processing technology in apps, ordinary men are no longer merely consumers, of retouched images of pop stars and politicians. They can now easily upload, a retouched, idealized image of themselves, to social media. Perhaps it was natural then, that they would want the figure in the mirror to be closer to this published, electronically enhanced ideal. Also, the recent necessity for remote working system, may have contributed. Men, who perhaps previously spent very little time in front of the mirror, have been looking at their own face on screen all day long. Some psychologists warned that this can cause negative side effects. Because it's ultimately the same as sitting in front of a mirror all day. As we saw, in the episodes on, Kawaii culture, Japanese people tend to be obsessed with youth. And it's very important to present yourself, as inoffensive and non-threatening. It's possible, this cultural trend has further helped men, to feel positive about wearing makeup. As a result, more and more men in their 40s and 50s, have begun to routinely apply makeup. Not just younger people, with a more gender-fluid outlook. One more point, the results of a related survey, highlight other interesting findings. Although the most common motivation to wear makeup, is to cover up wrinkles and blemishes, that could otherwise cause an inferiority complex. The second most popular reason is to look younger. Friends wearing makeup comes in third place, and in fourth is seeing someone to promote makeup on YouTube. This sounds very typical of Japan. There are various reasons why people are easily influenced by others, such as remnants of village culture, even within Japan's neon-lit urban centers. This lingering image of society is rigid, hierarchical, exclusive and expects everyone to conform. The spread of social networking services has increased the sense of needing to belong to a much wider, national village, providing further disincentives to forging a unique identity. More recently, lace underwear in colors ranging from lemon yellow to millennial pink, 
has become popular with even the most conventional salarymen. The uplifting feeling that some women derived from wearing hidden lingerie, has become a major talking point among men, who are keen to show they are fashionable conformists, even if no one actually sees what's under their anonymous business suit. The reaction from women, has been favorable. For some time, fast fashion outlets have been promoting unisex clothing. Ironically, this is seen as a progressive step towards diversity and inclusion, despite the drive to conform that underlies these trends. Younger generations, who have grown up with online abuse, are certainly keen to promote a world free from prejudice. But in some ways, manifests as a desire for a placid, diverse herd, that follows the latest consumer trends. The diverse fashion tribes that once dominated Japanese youth culture, are fading away. Meanwhile, the government is still hesitant, to approve gay marriage. And address a whole range of, other minority rights issues. Japan is still ranked 120th, out of 156 countries, in the Gender Gap Index of 2021. Corporations claim that by switching to unisex designs, they can significantly reduce resource wastage, and live up to their sustainable development goals. But in many ways, it would be a mistake to see these trends as a significant shift, in individual attitudes. Rather than, novel marketing strategies that go largely unquestioned. In business, Japan has a very liberal, and open attitude to commercial innovation. With weekly business news reports, showcasing even the most weird and wonderfully useless product developments. Ultimately, Japan's only viable social movement is novelty consumerism. What Shibusawa Eichi, the father of Japanese capitalism, calls, contributing to society, which to all intents and purposes means business as usual. How do you feel about makeup and lingerie for men? Are you tempted to try out these things? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to know about Japanese culture, and realities of life more, don't forget to subscribe. And if any of you are thinking of learning Japanese, or are already learning, please take a look at our other channels. Click the URL on the description.